welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to continue with our exploration of this very fine area in France known as the French Riviera or the Côte d'Azur. Oh, look at this. We don't get roadside verges like this in the UK. The village we're going to be visiting today, in 2022, it was voted the most beautiful village in France. If you've been following the series, you'll have already discovered how beautiful these villages can be. So I reckon this one's going to be something special. We're just walking over the bridge at the bottom of the town as we come in and the first thing you see is this like, I don't know what you call it, a stream with a natural waterfall and the water's so clear, I can see the bottom from up here. I think I've seen about four rivers so far and they've just, they've been absolutely stunning. I really would have liked to have stayed nearby but I was always on a motorway or a, a national route where there was just nowhere to park. This town's sort of built into the face of a cliff at the bottom mostly, but there's houses as you go up. I would imagine that, oh wow, oh look at this. I, I, I'm not sure if these are just private houses or b and or see that little mast down there. I wish I could zoom in with this camera, but that swimming pool, there's like a, a theatrical mast stationed at the top. And then what looks like lupins growing, I don't know if they are or not, they're too far away, my eyes aren't that good, but they kind of look like that from here. There's a bird up there, it's calling and calling. I've got a funny feeling this is its young down here. Yeah, it's just left the nest, it's probably not able to fly yet. That's why that bird's calling. Giving instructions, I shouldn't doubt. She's going crazy up there, let's get her off the road. Come on. If you'd like to see the other locations I've 
filmed on this three month tour of the area I've left a, a link to the playlist in the description box so you can get access to all the locations there I don't know if you can notice this I didn't actually notice it while I was walking around the town but on your left there there's a big three story building and it's got like I don't know if it's ivy exactly but it's got foliage growing up the side of the building almost up to the gutter level I'll show you again so that you can see it a bit more clearly as I say I didn't notice this while I was walking but when I was editing I noticed it and then I realised it looks like something I don't know if you can see it but to me it clearly looks like something and I don't know whether that was intentional and the people have deliberately done it or whether it was just a fluke anyway we'll see it in a little while when we walk past and I'll get a better shot of it you let me know what you think it looks like and whether or not you think they did it deliberately or it was just a lucky coincidence Now, just coming up on the left are some beautiful trees. I don't know what sort of trees they are, but they love them here in France. And I love it when I see them because they're beautiful, but they're a nightmare because they plant them right on the edge of the road, close to the curb. And well, you've seen how big my motor home is. I have to drive very close to the curb because I'm on the wrong side of the road with my mirror already. Even when I'm, my wheels are nearly touching where the curb would be, I'm overhanging in the wrong lane but then when they plant these trees at the side of the road they tend to plant them close and the way these trees grow is they get up to a certain height and almost always they fork one trunk grows into two boughs like we're looking here see the V so invariably the left hand one of the V comes out diagonally over the road and it's touch or go whether I can get underneath them it's quite nerve-wracking driving down a road like that because you've got traffic coming towards you and as it does you have to swerve over to the right but at the same time you've got the trees growing out over you in which case you need to be to the left so you have this constant feeling of anxiety in your stomach when something comes towards you and you have to move over because if you misjudge it you're going to lose the top corner of the motorhome and it definitely happens because if you look up at them you'll see chunks taken out of them in places so when I see them, <laughs> I've got mixed emotions. <laughs> it's like, you know when you're driving down the road and the road suddenly narrows and there's traffic coming towards you, you get that clenching feeling in your stomach. Well, whenever I drive down an avenue in the motor home in France, that's kind of what I get every 20 meters or so. I've just done a little bit of Googling and they're called plane trees and they are very symbolic of France especially in the Provence re region I've found a couple of interesting things first of all they're native to Persia the second interesting thing is that apparently Napoleon instructed that they be planted all down the road so that his troops would have some shade to march in and they are very much a tree that gives a, a lot of shade they're non fruit bearing there's one tree in one village which has got a girth of eight meters uh, 1500 square meters of shade that provides that's incredible
we're approaching the main tourist part of the town now I was actually here a few days ago doing a recce and trying to work out where I was going to go and do the filming and I sat and had a meal here it was lovely it was relatively quiet uh, but I would imagine as the day moves on it gets more and more filled with people and there's a lovely vibe about the place massive variety of places to eat drink have a coffee it's just one of those places where you could sit all day long and just watch the world go by There you go. Can you see it? What do you think that foliage looks like? I know what I think. Put your answers in the comments and let me know whether you think it was intentional. And if so, how did they do it? How about that for a terrace? Oh, I could just imagine sitting up there having my breakfast and a cup of coffee, just watching the people and the hustle and bustle, maybe some delivery vans, the postman. I can't think of anything better. Everywhere I've been in this part of France, the buildings have had these shutters. I assume that's so that you can keep the heat out to a degree, but I think they look spectacular. And they never really freshly painted, but they're never dilapidated either totally. They, they seem to strike a perfect balance. I'd say you could earn a good living painting shutters in this part of the country. I've been doing this full time now for getting on for a year, maybe a little bit longer than that, but I spent a lot of time having to learn because I haven't got any previous experience in cinematography or media or anything like that. Um, and I'm, I'm enjoying it, but sometimes I'd like to come to a place like this in the evening and have a walk around. But the cameras that I use, I've got two cameras that I currently use. I've spent thousands already on equipment and other things uh, I've probably invested tens of thousands in total so far but I'd like to come and be able to film some places in the evening and to, to do that I need a better camera uh, there's one specifically I've got in mind it's not cheap and I just can't afford to buy it at the moment so if you appreciate what I do and you like the videos and you'd like to see more of them and maybe some different types maybe some evening ones in, in, in lower light and stuff like that um, then you can support the channel by visiting my buy me a coffee and just giving a donation i've left a link to it below the description so if you feel like supporting me you can do that or you can just like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment all of these things they help to support the channel and they help it to grow and eventually i'll be able to invest more money into it so i can bring even better quality pictures and audio thanks for listening
I was tempted here. Don't ask me what I think I would have done with it. I mean, where would you hang something like that? But it is great. Oh, 189 euros. Bargain. Now I told you this place was built sort of into the cliff side and so far we've been walking around for 20 minutes and you would have no idea of that but as we come up here you'll see how this place has got a relationship with the cliffs that isn't obvious there's only a few spots in the town where you notice it I can't help but feel that the geology surrounding the town probably has an impact on the environment. Maybe the wind blows over the town instead of cutting through it. I also notice that the buildings are all quite tall which provides a good deal of shade which is nice in this heat. But I wonder as well whether the position of the sun and the proximity of the cliffs also shades the town.
The French really celebrate art. I don't know anywhere that I've ever been where there are so many galleries. There's only a few here in Cotignac, but still on every street almost there's one that you can poke around in. They're all free to get into, and a lot of them the artist is actually in there working and you can sort of, you know, see them at work. If you like that sort of thing, make sure you check out my St Paul de Vance video, which is coming soon on the channel. I've never been to a place like it. It literally is gallery on gallery on gallery, and there's some very, very fine artwork there. But not only that, it's so lovely. It really is a fantastic little place. That'll be coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it.
écoute, je suis pas mort. Hein. Ah, ben bon, dans deux ans, j'ai 100 ans. One of the things I love about travelling as I do is not knowing what's around the next corner. I'm walking around in this town and it varies in, in its environment completely. You can one second be wandering around a tiny little alleyway and then suddenly it opens up into a big square like we just saw there. And then you go through some tunnels and you just don't know what to expect next. And I like that. I like the feeling of not knowing what I'm going to see today. I was walking up here and I really didn't know where I was going. I never know where I'm going. <laughs> but I was walking up here and I saw this there. And I thought, oh, what's up there? So I start wandering up there. And at the top, I was completely unprepared for what I found. I knew there was a theatre up here because the sign said so but I was just expecting a little building with a door and some windows in you know the sort of thing a small theatre in a small town this is the Theatre de Rocher from what I can see it was built in 1536 it's such a great location I'm sitting here in the town on the edge of the cliff in the open air and I don't know if they still use it today, but I, I have found something called the Festival du Rocher as recently as 2016. At the moment it says this is permanently closed, but I can't imagine why you would not use this space. Uh, I'll give you an example of, of something that I, I read about. They do one night at the opera. Can you imagine it? In the evening, it starts about 9.30. All the people from the town turn up excited find somewhere to sit there's a bit of light in and then some opera singers get up and start singing I've not been to an opera it's something that's still on my list of things to do but I can just imagine the ambience up here the atmosphere I reckon it would be something special